Hello there, this is Douglas Rumbaugh, and in this video I want to go over a couple of handy editing commands that are available to you in Bash. Uh, many of these will work in other shells as well. For example, I use KSH, which is why you can see I launched Bash explicitly here. And these all work in KSH with a couple of little slight differences. Uh, ZSH, you should also get similar mileage out of them. And note that these are part of the shell, not part of, say, the terminal emulator or anything like that. So as long as you are running Bash, these should be available to you. Now, these shells have multiple different editing modes that you can enable. There's the big two are VI, VI mode and Emacs mode. As the names would suggest, these, the editing commands in these modes are derived from the text editors in question. I use Vim as my text editor. However, I prefer Emacs mode on the command line uh, because the big difference between Emacs and Vim is that Vim is a modal editor where you have like a, a normal mode and an insert mode. Whereas in Emacs, you you don't have modes. What you have instead are um, modifier keys, control, alt, etc. So whereas in Vim, you have how the keyboard behaves depends on the mode you're in. In Emacs, it depends on whether you're holding control down or not. And I find that that particular modality of having just one editing mode and then using control and alt to execute editing instructions works a lot more nicely in the context of Bash where you're working on one line. The, the managing the Vim stuff is a little bit excessive, so I prefer using Emacs. Obviously, if you like Vim instead, there's the Vim mode for you. Uh, now, Bash by default is an Emacs mode, which is quite convenient. So I'm just going to dive right into how this stuff works. Now, first, let's get a couple of words on here to deal with. Now, as I'm sure you're already aware, you can use backspace and the arrow keys to move left and right and delete and all of these things that you're probably used to. However, there are other editing options that are available to you that can make life a little bit easier. Uh, so first off, if you want to get to the beginning of the line, rather than mousing all the way over to it or scrolling all the way over to it, uh, home and end. Home will take you to the beginning, end will take you to the end. With that said, home and end are kind of off here on the side. So if you would prefer to use the Emacs mode commands for that, instead, if you hold down the control key and press A, that will put you at the beginning of the line. Holding it down and pressing E will put you at the end. So that right there is very, very useful. Uh, for example, say I wanted to run a command and I forgot to put sudo on it, app get update. Well, if you're in bash, you can just do a sudo bang bang like this, and that will recall the previous command and run it in sudo. I tend to use KSH, so I actually don't have that. So what I do instead is a little bit different but honestly, not a whole lot less convenient, is I just recall the previous command from history, hold down control, press A, type sudo, just like that. Gets you, the same, gets you the same way, and it actually doesn't involve significantly more keystrokes to do it. So that's just a common use case that I have for, for those. Now, in addition to moving from the beginning to the end, you can, of course, move within the line as well. So short of using the arrow keys, you can actually use F and B for forward and back. If you hold down the control key and press B, that will move you backwards by one character. And if instead of control, you hold down Alt and press B, that takes you back by words. Forward is the same way. Control F is forward by word, or I mean, control F is forward by character, and Alt F is forward by word. Uh, you'll find that this seems to hold with the delete commands as well. So we'll see in a moment, control operates on characters, alt operates on entire words. And so that gets you your basic navigation. You can move around quite easily like this. Now, if you want to do editing, it's pretty easy to delete and make modifications to the line without using backspace. Uh, so the most basic one is control D, and that's just going to delete the character underneath of the cursor, just like that. And if you hold down Alt-D, that's going to delete entire words. So Control-D deletes the character under the cursor, and Alt-D is going to delete the word under the cursor. Now, if we go back into the middle of a word, 
like say here, and I hold down Alt D, you'll see it only goes to the end of the word. So it's the character to the end. It doesn't delete inside of the word like a DIW would in Vim. Another thing you may want to do is just shave off all of the characters from where you are to the end of the line. So for example, if you want if you want to recall some sort of a some sort of a command and change the last argument, uh, one easy way to do that is to navigate to the cutoff point in the line where you want to kill everything. And then if you hold down control and press K, that's going to delete from where you are to the end of the line. Uh, likewise, if you navigate to where you want to be and hold down control and press U, that deletes to the left. So control K deletes from where you are to the end, U from where you are to the beginning. Uh, it's worth pointing out that actually this is a place where I like KSH a little bit better uh, because in KSH, control U works a little bit differently and that rather than going from where you are to the beginning of the line, which is something that I find I rarely want to do, uh, in that case, control U just kills the entire line, which is which is nice because otherwise, um, if you're typing a command and you decide you don't want that command anymore, uh, the conventional thing to do is control C. Uh, but if you want to do this without a keyboard interrupt uh, on KSH, control U deletes the line without aborting the command or anything like that. So that's quite handy. You can also change the capitalization of stuff. So we roll on back here. You can use Alt U and Alt L to change to upper and lowercase respectively. So if I say Alt L, that's gonna take the next word and make it lowercase. Alt U is going to make it uppercase. So that's handy with, uh, particularly I find that handy with environment variables. So say I want to echo my path and I forget to um, capitalize the word path. Well, I can just do a BU and there we go. Much nicer than deleting it and retyping it. And then the last editing command that I want to talk about, which is quite handy, is transpose, control T. So say you meant, you meant to type in CD and you accidentally typed in DC instead. Hold down control, press T. You'll take the last two characters, flip them. SL becomes LS. Very handy if you happen to catch it. Now normally if I'm doing that, I'll say like SL enter and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll run the command before I recognize that it's transposed. But in the event that I do recognize it, I can fix it particularly easily just like that. So those are just some basic quick editing commands that you can use in Bash to more effectively enter commands. There will be a list of these commands on my website. I'll have a link in the video description to a nice table with all of these commands, including the both the Bash and the KSH version because I use KSH. They're quite handy, and there's something that I didn't learn about until fairly late in the game, and it's possible that many of you haven't discovered them yet either. They definitely make life easier. Um, what I do, to be completely honest with you, if you saw me looking down there at the time, because I don't have a lot of these memorized because I don't use very many of them, uh, but I just have a little printout with the different keyboard shortcuts on it, and I just keep that beside my keyboard. Uh, so I'm working on learning them myself, and eventually I will obviously will not need that anymore. <laughs> That's where Vim mode would be useful. Is with, in Vim mode, I wouldn't have to keep this because they're just the Vim commands that I already know, but I'm trying to learn the Emacs ones instead. So there you go. Well, and that's all for this one. So I hope that you found this interesting, and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one.